What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. Y'all check it out. There's Jake Arrington, my 10 year old, and today we're in Stewart, Florida and we're headed out fishing for what? We don't know. We've got sand flea, shrimp, we've got every kind of bait we need, we've got all of our old salty rods, and we're going fishing. But what y'all don't know yet is today I'm making Jake do everything. He's already went in, bought the shrimp, bought the tackle, used the credit card, then went to the gas station, pumped the gas, and now he's about to back the boat off the trailer, pull it around to the beach, and wait for me to go park the truck and come back. So I don't always have to do everything on my own. So one of my biggest, most important things with my kids and raising my two boys, for those of y'all that don't know, I have two boys, Jake and Luke, 10 and five. A lot of people miss a lot of steps when it comes to raising kids and they want to just get them the nicest gear, let them catch the biggest fish and expect them to know what they're doing. There's a lot of steps that go into doing what we do before actually catching the fish. So as you can see from what you just witnessed, he's 10 years old and that's the first time I've ever backed him off that trailer and let him do it on his own. I coached him on the way here and he just did it flawlessly and y'all just watched. If you open your kids up and expose them to things that they're not comfortable to, trust me, they will become stronger men down the road. And I'm sure even with your daughter, stronger daughters. I mean, it's not gonna kill him. He knows what to do driving the boat. I've let him drive the boat a million times out in the open. Now he knows how to do it at the boat ramp. What he doesn't know though, is I'm gonna make him load the boat too. And that's gonna probably scare him to death. But we're gonna make it happen and catch some awesome fish. But did you die? Nope. Hey, you did a good job. Good job driving that Just boat, got man. Some fans pulling up. <laughs> So would you agree with your kids that sometimes you gotta take them out of their comfort zone? You do, you absolutely. You literally have to make them the do time. things and learn things. Jake was scared to death, he was nervous, he was worried, and I said, you're just yeah. doing it. Yep. Yeah. I backed him in and look, he's fine. Pretty easy. Yeah. For, oh, now you're gonna get cocky. Huh? <laughs> Pretty easy. <laughs> What's up, baby? What's up? Money everywhere. For real? All right, what do you wanna go after, Jake? Pompano, snapper. Did you just hear them say that there's dolphin everywhere? Yeah, we should go. We don't even have bait for that. Yep. What the heck? How are we gonna come up out here? One of our buddies drive by and said there's mahi everywhere, which is a dolphin, and we don't have anything for that. Whatever, we're just going fishing. All right, well somehow, Jake convinced me to come way offshore. So we're actually about 10 miles off the coast of Stewart right now because when those guys drove by they said there's dolphin everywhere we had to try to come get one. Are you ready son? Yes sir. Look alive. Every time we get in from fishing he wonders why I'm so tired. Well today he's doing everything so he's gonna know why I'm tired when I get in. All right I'm gonna show you all a little tech tip when we're on this 23 foot boat. This is my 23 foot blackjack. Got a 175 Suzuki and when I'm trying to troll I don't have outriggers let me show you how I do it. This is just a little piece of trolling copper wire. I wrap it around here and do a slight bend in it. See how my rod, the line comes straight down to there and then straight out. Same on this side except for I have it hooked on the reel because that particular reel has a little groove on it. That way my lines are down closer to the water and they actually perform better. Then the one up here, I have it called my shotgun straight out the back. You don't need to pin that one down. You got him? Keep that rod tip up. I had a bite too. Let me get this camera down. It's fighting like a bonita. All right, you guys, we've been trolling for about 30 minutes. I was just about to give up because I know of some other kind of fish we can catch. And look at this. Looks big, whatever it is. You see color? Yes. Nice and easy, light line. Right there is whatever it is. 
Ease him up here. All right, just keep his head up. Look at that. There we go. Hey, good job. Thank you. Hold him up and show him to the camera. Son! Hey, I yeah. love it when a plan comes together. Mm -hmm. Actually, put him in the cooler. We'll use him for cut bait for something else later on down the road. Yeah. Throw him in there. Whew. Boom! We're gonna troll for about 10 more minutes trying to get a dolphin and then we're going in after mackerel. All right, show everybody that lure. Yo, Zuri. Yo, Zuri jerk bait. Throw it out there. All right, let out some line. So we're actually trolling three of those. I've got two of my light old salties and one of my heavy ones. Both the smaller ones have the little three to four inch Yozuri, the bigger one's got the six inch. So anytime you're trolling, you always base your directions off of looking backwards. So that's the right, this is the shotgun, this is the left. When we're fishing and a fish hits, I can immediately look at Jake and say, Jake, grab the right rod. But don't ever make the mistake of thinking forward and this being right. It's always facing backwards. I've got the right rod and the left rod pinned down with the copper wire. The shotgun just straight out the back. This one's got a six inch Yozuri. Those two have four inches. I didn't know if it was going to work or not, but we're trying. And he just caught him a nice Bonita. Leave a comment below and tell me what's your favorite thing to take your kids to do. Fishing, hunting, video games. I want to hear what you guys love to do with your kids the most. So we've been trolling for probably I don't know, a total of an hour now. There's big sport boats all out here, so I know the fish gotta be biting. But like I said at the beginning of the video, we came out to go pompano fishing or mackerel. We didn't come prepared for dolphin. But one thing I'm never scared of is a challenge, and I catch everything on these lures that I'm trolling. Today just might not be our day to catch a dolphin, so we're gonna give it about 10 more minutes, and if we don't get a bite, we're running all the way back in shore to a little area called Peck's Lake and we're going to try to catch some mackerel because one of my favorite things in the world to eat is Spanish mackerel on my grill. Alright, well we just got in here to Peck's Lake. There's a big giant ground swell so it's actually pretty dangerous. You've got to really pay attention when you're in here that one of those swells don't break on you. Jake's got his rod out and we're going to just troll around until we figure out where these fish are sitting. I'm actually marking a lot of fish on the bottom, so I'm gonna throw a live shrimp out on a pink jig head. Oh! Got something! A shark! Who would have ever thought I'd have caught a shark on a jig? Look at this little thing! Kelly would say, oh, it's so cute! Look at this little guy. He's definitely not dinner either, though. Remember that bonita we caught? We're about to use him for bait. That's a serious boat right there, y'all. We just caught one of those too. They just caught a little baby shark, just like, like the one I got. I think I got his brother on. So odd. Look at that. I don't know what kind they are, but they're little. You want to try to catch one? Yeah. How deep is it here? It's 24 foot. Probably at the bottom. 
Look, she's got another one on over there. I guess this is some sort of nursery. Huh? A nursery? Yeah. Alright, quit letting it out. Son! Hooked up! Take it easy on him. You don't want to lose him. What do you got? Probably a little shark. A what? Little shark. That's my guess. Oh, oh man! It was a shark. Let's go catch some pompano or something. Yeah. We'll see y'all back in the river. You guys, we're running in, Jake and I, and there's a massive school of these rays. They're all over the place right here. They're sort of like the Kalanos that we saw in Maryland, but they don't have that same body. Look at them all. All right, so we're in. Look at that. That's called a goofy jig, and we're going to try to pompano fish. My buddy Trip Wagner is right over my shoulder, and he just lost a giant pompano right at the boat. Jake's up front using a live shrimp on a pink jig head. Anytime I'm goofy jig fishing, I make as far a cast as I can. If we can't catch them like this, I've got sand fleas and we will catch them like that. Uh-oh, he's got one. Get him, son. That's what you get sleeping on the job. Oh, he come off? He just missed him, boys. What happened? Come on, Jake. We got to catch dinner. We got to at least catch dinner. A lot of people always ask me how we're always so successful. It's because we never give up. We always have a plan A, B, C, D, all the way down to Z if we need it. Just got to keep trying. We've been out now for like four hours. We've caught, I think, three sharks in a bonita. If I was a bet man, I'd believe we're going to go in with something to eat for dinner. All right, let's go make another drift elsewhere. Jake, yeah. you think you could drive that big old boat? Probably not. Not? That ain't a positive attitude. Look at that thing. It's huge. That's the horizon. Hey, y'all are getting photo bombed by YouTube. <laughs> Jake, you can drive that thing. It's just so big, you want to see the little. It's so big, huh? But are you ready to catch something we can eat? Yes. Let's go. All right, so this is a sand flea rig. It's just like a rig you've seen me use called a chicken rig a hundred times. Two hooks and a weight. But this is the most awesome weight I've ever seen. See these tongs like that, the thing sticking up? They're meant to hold that weight in place, but when you get a fish, they flop down. For any of y'all catfishing up north in those rivers and struggle to get your bait to stay where you want it, do these things right here work. This rig goes perfectly with my bigger old salty because this rod's long and can handle the weight. There's an airport right over there, so constantly have planes coming over us. The current's coming this way. That bait will stay right there because of that weight. So I'm gonna put another one out here and another one out there and try to catch us a pompano. So here's what we're using for bait. You see that? It's called sand fleas. That's my biggest YouTube video thus far. We caught them, cleaned them, and cooked them. And they were absolutely amazing. A lot of people said that they are called something else. Well, here in South Florida, they're called sand fleas, and Pompano love them. All right, you guys, it is freezing cold out here. Jake, yeah. I bet you wish you wore them sweatpants now, huh? Yeah. You guys, by now, I'm sure you're wondering why I had a giant mutton snapper as a thumbnail. Well, guess what? Last week when we were in Jacksonville, Florida, I caught my personal best mutton ever. You're about to watch me catch him, clean him, and cook him right now. You guys already know I throw y'all for a lot of loops in YouTube, 
Well, here we go. Let's go back to Jacksonville. My good buddy John Von Thrawn, Kelly Young, we're fishing 200 foot of water. Watch this. You guys, you cannot. It's funny because like last three places I've went, I've said this, you can't get a better better fishery. That box, show them under Joey's feet. Got muttons, triggers, firms. You can't get better than that. It's completely full. And we're really just now dialed in. It's fighting like a mutton now because it's coming up with the Dying current. Up, yeah. Mm. Kind of a scamp too, Bubba. Shazam. I said it's coming up and now it's just dogging. Yeah, let me scoot back. Now I can pump and reel. This is a really long leader. About 30 foot long. What do you got? What is it, kid? It's hang with me. Man. Big huge. A big enormous gigantic mutton snapper gabriel that's a, that's actually a stud holy man oh, oh, oh boy look at that thing barely hooked oh yeah that is a stud mutton there bubba hey 50 pound test on a bonita strip there you go hey burritos mas grande look at that giant that's a big mutton if I've ever seen one. You guys, everything you need to know for this charter business will be in the link below. And if you don't know what that means, go underneath the video and click on the description. Along with all my sponsors, Danko, Plier, Frog Togs, Favorite Rods, and Joey's business will be in there too. All right, you guys, that was an amazing day. We're measuring this fish right now. Here's the tail, here's the tail. That's about 35, 35, 30, 34 and a half. 34 and a half inches long. My this dog. is what Joey said you come to Jacksonville to catch. It's these big monster muttons. Now we're fishing different style leaders. Joey fishes 100 pound test leaders with about 20 foot long. I was using a 50 pound test leader about 30 foot long with just a big old chunk of bonita. You drop it down in the current, and if you want to learn the rest, you better book a charter with Captain Joey. Their scales are huge on these big muttons like this. Always go with the scales. Cut down just like that. And what I mean with the scales, come in underneath them and turn your blade and cut in just like that. Start up here at the head. Get that knife going. All the way down to the end just like that. Poke it out. Boom. I always clean the scales off my knife when I get it out of there. Just like so. Now this isn't your typical mutton. It's much bigger, so the rib bones and the pin bones are gonna be a lot harder to get through. One thing I can tell you guys, if you book a trip with Joey over here, they do everything. You don't need rods, you don't need tackle, you don't need anything they come in they'll clean the fish for you when you leave you're gonna be taking a bunch of memories and a bunch of meat those seagulls are so amazing i love the sound of them but they don't have any respect for youtube when you're trying to film they have no interest in being quiet now some of these bigger muttons the meat doesn't look as good as a smaller mutton, but it still tastes the same. When I go to skin it, if you were gonna grill this, I would recommend scaling it and leaving the skin on. But we don't do much of that style of cooking, so I always skin it. Plus, all this fish, besides just a little chunk, is going to Alabama with us. Look at that. I turn my knife really almost flat to get that bloodline out. It doesn't get much prettier than that. Except for the vermilions you're going to see on Kelly's channel. They are super good eating. 
So when we went out, I didn't even explain to you as much of what we did because I was only gonna make one video and then we caught the biggest amberjack I've ever seen in my life and I sort of got sidetracked and made two videos. So when we went out yesterday morning, first thing we stopped at 20 miles and caught bait. Then we stopped at 40 miles and caught a limit of vermilion snapper and a big old trigger fish, a bunch of big trigger fish really. Then we ended up at 60 miles where we caught all these big fish. All right, I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side. But I will see you guys back in the kitchen. Well, we're gonna cook up some of this mutton for dinner tonight. Yeah, tell me that wasn't a mutton of a lifetime. Surely you didn't think I wasn't gonna show you Jake load the boat. All right, straighten your motor up and come on up. Slow it down. Tilt it up a little bit. Now turn it off. And just like that, my 10 year old has loaded the boat for his first time ever. Now let's go cook some mutton. You know it's a giant mutton when that's the smallest piece on the flay. So I went ahead and broke it down a little bit. This was the top loin, but only about a quarter of it. I'm actually gonna cook Kelly the front top half of the filet, which can sometimes be the hardest piece to cook on a filet that's that thick. So I broke it down just like that. All I'm gonna do is add some sea salt. Kelly loves her fish completely plain and then makes up for it later on down the road once you put it on the plate because we've made her an awesome looking salad and we have an insanely good salad dressing. So no need to sit here and put all kinds of crazy seasonings on the fish. Now back to me and Jake fishing yesterday. <laughs> we tried everything we could try. No reason to go home empty handed because we left with a ton of memories. He learned how to put the boat in the water. He learned how to take the boat out of the water. He was driving out there way offshore when it was rough. So you always take something home, we just didn't have anything to eat. So I still had the mutton footage and I knew I could use it at some point when we went fishing and didn't catch anything. So yesterday was an awesome time to do that. And I'm glad I did because it fit perfectly. All right, let's give it a flip. Look at that fish, just browning up perfectly. All that was in that pan, with a little bit of this butter that she likes, some pure Irish butter, salt and pepper, and that's it. Now the sauce is a pina colada style sauce. You take butter, melt it down, then you dump in the rum, cook it hot and fast till it cooks off all the alcohol. Then you slowly add in this pina colada mix until you get it to the consistency you want it. All right, so for those of y'all that saw my last hog video, you saw this crab stuffing. Had a little bit left over. I'm gonna add it right there and make her sort of a crab cake on the side. So we got a beautiful salad, fresh fish, and a little bit of a crab cake. It's gonna be so good. What do you think about that though? I think this looks like my type of dish right here. Some good greens, some good fish, vegetables, your little sugar with some fruit, nice crab cake, and this mysterious sauce that I've never had before. I put this on that, just drizzle it on. Yeah. It smells pineapple y. I've never seen someone make a sauce out of a Malibu. <laughs> it was the first time for everything. But I do love that rum, so I think I'm going to really like this sauce. crispiness of the fish. That is so good. And it falls right apart. Mm -mm -mm. Alright you guys, you've seen it. 
You saw Jake and I fish all day. You saw me catch my biggest mutton ever, right at 23 pounds. You watched me clean it and cook it for my beautiful girlfriend, Kelly Young. But right now, it's time to end this video. Kelly's got a deer heart she's gonna clean and cook because guess what, guys? She killed her first deer and her second deer back to back days. Anyhow, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. But like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. See y'all.